Chancellor of Oakland Community College since January 1, 2018. Since joining Oakland Community College, Chancellor Provenzano has led several major initiatives, including refreshing the strategic plan, expanding global partnerships, launching the college's first comprehensive brand campaign, Excellence in Power, investing in campus infrastructure, and building relationships through a collaborative servant leadership style and mission-driven focus on student success and the community. Please join me in welcoming Peter Provenzano, Jr. to the podium. Thank you so much, Nikki. Uh, are we okay? Uh, you know, so it's just a pleasure to be back here in Waterford for uh, this opportunity to give you some highlights of the excellent things that have been happening at OCC. Uh, and it's just nice to be back at the Overtime Grill. Uh, but first, I think before we get started, how about a round of applause for Boomer? And so we thank you once again for uh, having us. And speaking of excellence, the year we talk a lot about our mission, which is excellence in everything that we do. And that is our promise to not only our students, but also our community. And I, I think this is just a really cool picture. We, uh, this is a picture of our uh, parade that we had this past summer of all of our graduates from last year. And so they had an opportunity for the first time, because the pandemic was virtual, we had a virtual ceremony, but we uh, had this really cool idea to have a, a car parade. And so they dressed up their cars, some of them came in convertibles, as you can see, there were some limos that were all decked out. And it was just an absolutely mind-blowing experience to see how proud our graduates were of their tremendous accomplishment, as well as their families along the parade route, you know, with their pom poms and their, their, their whistles and everything, cheering them on. So, this was just a really, really wonderful and excellent memory uh, for our graduates. And speaking of graduates, once again, we're proud that Waterford Public Schools, the students from Waterford Public Schools, chose OCC as their top destination for Public school graduates from Waterford chose OCC than any other college in the state of Michigan. And that's something we're really very, very proud of, that they're choosing us as their top choice. And we're also very proud and excited about a program that I, I introduced to you uh, last year. Uh, it was a program from the state of Michigan called Michigan Reconnect. And what it does is it provides free community college tuition to adults who are 25 years or older who do not have a degree or certificate at least for not only the tuitions, but the tuition, but also the fees. And uh, we were really hopeful a year ago that this would begin to attract adults back to OCC for upscaling. Because we all know, and many of us own businesses, or we work for businesses, um, how difficult it is to find talent these days. And so oftentimes, the talent is right there uh, in your organization. Oftentimes they need a degree of care or a short credential. So coming back to OCC allows them to receive that training and uh, potentially find a, find a new job within the same place that they work. And so we, the response to this has been tremendous. We couldn't have told them better. Uh, currently we're, we have seen over 2,000 students come to OCC and take advantage of this program. That's more than any other community college in the state of Michigan. And so we're really, really not only proud of that, but just really very excited that this opportunity exists for our community. And so please help spread the word. This is just a tremendous asset that we hope that everyone takes advantage of. In fact, it's so successful that the state is starting to talk about lowering that age down to 19 uh, from 25. So we're, we're a big advocate of that as well. And we're also very excited and we continue to support our public safety uh, officers. We continue to invest in this area of what we do. That is one of the most important areas for OCC. As you know, we've heard me talk about uh, the police academy training that we have, basic advanced canine reserve, uh, as well as our fire training, our EMS 911. All of this training is done at our Robert Hills campus where we have uh, a press facility, which is, if you haven't seen it, it's really an outdoor village. It's an outdoor training village. 
that we're very proud of. And um, it's been so successful. Uh, it's been there maybe 20 years. It was extremely innovative for its time. But now we're looking at it saying, you know, they need some, some renovations. And things have changed over the last 20 years. The training is different uh, than 20 years ago. And uh, our, our uh, Dave CC, our dean over this area, has joined us. And uh, he is really leading an effort to take our Crest facility in Auburn Hills to the next level. What is the Crest? of the future really look like. One of the things that, as we all know, we need more training and active shooter training. And so there are very few facilities around the nation that actually do that. We want to make sure that OCC is providing that training in the future. So more to comment on that, hopefully I'll have a lot more details next year, but it's something we're really very excited about. And we have, uh, not only do we provide the majority of the uh, uh, you know, we provide the majority of the training for our first responders here in Oakland County, but we get a lot of help from the uh, local police departments and fire departments. In fact, I know we have many of them here. Uh, your uh, Waterford Zone uh, Deputy Police Chief serves on our advisory council. So I, I did, I know he's here, but I haven't had a chance to say this. But thank you very much. Appreciate your commitment. Uh, to our efforts to train our first responders it is so important that they receive top-notch training and we can continue to attract more and more talent. This, there's a dire need in this area and the good news is, is we're starting to see more interest in this. Our, our graduation, our academies, uh, police and fire are growing and we've seen record numbers, so that's really nice to see. I want to take an opportunity to talk about this really cool uh, program. It's called Kids Night Out. And uh, what it does is it offers free cleaning, uh, dental exams, limited x rays, and we have reduced cost visual x rays and CLX, at our dental hygiene clinic that's located right here in Waterford at our Island Lakes campus. And uh, uh, we have, if you're interested, we have an opportunity for you tonight to go at 5 30 to 8 30. But we also have future uh, events and opportunities on March 23rd, May 13th. Please spread the word. This is just a great opportunity and a great uh, asset in, uh, for the community to take advantage of. And it's also an awesome way to support our, our students. And so if you have any questions, our Dean of Health Sciences, Mary Miles, is here sitting with us and she'll be more than happy to put you in touch uh, with our general hygiene clinic or answer any questions we have on our health sciences programs. And we continue to uh, provide and partner with local area businesses. You can talk about this every year. Our just solid commitment to this. Um, we are committed to Oakland 80 by 30. We work very closely with the county on this, and it just has been pressure. Oakland 80 by 30 uh, is a goal where by 2030, 80% of working adults will have a degree or credential. And so one way is to get there is to reach out to other businesses. As I mentioned, there's top talent right there at all of your businesses. And sometimes it just means some training. And so one of the things that we specialize in, and I want to make sure to remind you of this, many of you have already taken advantage of it, is the customized training solutions that we offer. Uh, we can help you identify your training needs, we can build training that addresses your goals, we have very flexible and affordable options, including online. And so that's, those are things that the companies and the students really enjoy. So if you have any questions about that, uh, go to our website. We have uh, the web page link right there. But uh, anyone else at, at our table would be more than happy to connect you to this incredible opportunity at OCC. And we have a history of partnering with the businesses to do this training. Right we are the largest recipient of Michigan New Jobs Training Program funding from the state of Michigan, which provides free training. Public. The state of Michigan provides free training for newly created jobs. It's an entire program. And because we're located here in Oakland County, uh, we provide more of this training than any other community college in the state of Michigan. But we also have very, very strong growing condition apprenticeship programs that are providing uh, great success at career companies. As well as we participate in Manufacturing Day, we have a growing PLC and robotics technician program. Uh, these students are going to this, taking these classes, learning how to use robots. Uh, there are grants that are available for them to take this for free. They are literally, they're barely finishing the training. 
because they have lawyers that are tapping them on the shoulder saying, you know, that's close enough, just start to be tomorrow. Uh, and so uh, we're trying to get the word out. There's such a huge demand in this industry that we're providing that training, as well as reaching out for veterans. Um, there's a lot of value that our veterans bring uh, to the workforce. And so we're really reaching out to them, uh, making sure that they have the right training and the right assistance to connect to future employment. And we continue our commitment to being a strong community partner. One of the things that we uh, have strong partnership with one organization is the DIA. We're continuing to participate in the Inside Out program. We're actually the largest installation uh, in the county. Uh, at all five core campuses, we have these works of art probably displayed at our campuses. If you've been there, you may have seen them. And I want to congratulate Waterford Township. You're also a uh, participant in this as well. And I just think this is just such a wonderful thing that the DIA is really reaching out to communities and providing our and, and, and bringing our into the, uh, to the communities and to those that they otherwise not have that exposure. And you've heard me in the past talking about our desire to build new buildings to renovate uh, our infrastructure. And I talked about all of the, the different plans that were coming forward, including our new science building. Well, this past December, we uh, finished that science building. We had a ribbon cutting ceremony uh, where we uh, introduced our new and renovated science, computer science, and general classrooms. Um, and the thing about these buildings is the new collaborative space that we're building. This is what the students love the most. And it just warms my heart. You walk through the hallways, you see them in the little breakout sessions, charging their phones, charging their computers up, but they're working on their, on their home and their projects together. And it's just really wonderful to see. Um, you can see our other board here, Dan Jackson, in the, in the middle there, building those massive scissors uh, that uh, she did without any practice, just after this <laughs> And uh, we had some uh, administrators there as well, and uh, Doug Mylock, who's chairman of our panel, and uh, uh, Quentin Messer, who was the CEO of uh, the MEDC, uh, uh, joined us and had some, uh, some really wonderful words for you. And I want to take an opportunity for you to mark the calendar on some really exciting things that are coming that uh, you or others that you may know are interested in. We have uh, a number of orientations coming up soon, our basic police academy orientation on Wednesday, the 22nd, uh, fire academy on the 21st of February, as well as May 6th, our 911 dispatch academy orientation, March 16th and 17th. And you can see there we have start dates for our free pre apprenticeship sessions starting. 28th, uh, June 20th, March 28th, June 20th, as well as September 12th. And I already mentioned the kids' <coughs> night uh, and our dental hygiene program. So really, you know, just the best thing I always tell people is to check out our website on a frequent basis. There's a lot of things and a lot of opportunities around the community to take advantage of. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us. And I want to take a, a moment to thank our, our board of trustees. Um, we are so fortunate to have such a supportive board uh, that is so supportive, not only of uh, just the college uh, in its entirety, but also our students, the passion for our students shows um, every day. And we actually have a couple of our board members here with us today. I mentioned uh, our board chair, Pam Jackson, who's here for joining us. Pam, would you raise your hand? The Secretary of Work, Susan Gibson, is, is here with us. I that they're here at an early morning meeting shows exactly the dedication that they have, uh, not only for our community and our students, and they really are that link. They are that connection between OCC and our community. They do it very, very well. And so with that, I, I tried to keep it brief. There's a lot of things that I can talk about. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you may have, although I do know that you're all very excited about Scott's presentation. Uh, Scott has an advantage over me. He shows pictures of cute kids that I can't compete with. I, I'm waiting for one of these years, maybe six years, he's gonna throw puppies up there. <laughs> That's gonna really be really taking the next level. So, uh, but anyway, any questions you weren't happy to answer about uh, those see before Scott takes them. Okay, thank you so much. So much, Peter. And uh, 
I'm not sure if you guys know what the chamber does in the OCC. We have an OCC intern right now. So if you want to stop and meet her, her name is Shade. She's um, one of our graphic geniuses along with Avery. So thank you so much for there. All right, next we have Scott Lindbergh, the superintendent of the Waterford School District, going on three years now. Scott's forward-thinking leadership has brought about many successes for the district, including, including historic investments in curriculum and developing an aggressive strategic plan that has set the district on a path of new achievement and limitless possibility. When he isn't serving in his role as superintendent, Scott likes to spend time with his family, which includes three daughters, a son-in-law, two grandsons, and his wife of 31 years, Christy. Please welcome Scott to the podium. Thank you, Nikki, for that uh, warm introduction. I am a grandfather now, so I do wear these. Um, well, and an amazing job to our Ma Chamber Choir uh, singer, Evan Miller. So we appreciate it having one of our students here uh, this morning. They are just a sample of the amazing talent that we have here at the Water School District. Well, good morning, everyone. I am so happy to be here with you today in person. And this is how it is supposed to be. We're getting back to normal. Masks are being dropped. We have the mandate has been dropped. So students will be able to take part in that uh, in just a couple of weeks. We're in one room sharing the good news with one another and connecting. Now, before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge our Board of Education and my cabinet. Our Board of Education, President Mike Ristich, who is here with us this morning. Mike. <laughs> Vice President John Hulsbaum, Treasurer Joan Sutherland, Secretary Julie Johnson, and Trustees Bob Pickett, Rob Patricia, and Kristen Wagner. Now, without their support, much of our district's success would not be possible. This board does more than just gather to make a few great decisions. There's a lot of work, a lot of discussion, a lot of collaboration that goes behind the scenes that they put in every day. In fact, just one example is this past fall, when Trustee Wagner launched the Building Classroom Libraries for WSD Initiative. She began collecting books and generously donated over 3,500 new and gently used books that span across all grade levels to our classrooms. New teachers had the opportunity to shop for 50 books, each to start their own classroom collection. The project also donated books to our sweet breeze and book It's that type of leadership that truly makes a difference in our students' lives. So thank you. Now, my cabinet, uh, Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning Services, Lisa Eldridge. Uh, Assistant Superintendent of Business and Operations, Stan Yelka, is here uh, this morning. Executive Director of Human Resources, Susan Pyle, is with us. And Director of Communication and Community Relations, Sarah Davis. So today, I want to focus on how bright our future is here in Waterford, and specifically in the Water School District. The last two years, have been filled with so many challenges, making it my personal mission to connect, to counteract this negativity with positive news. I can feel the tide slowly turning, and I hope that each of you do too. Navigating the difficult times is not about waiting for them to be over. It's about understanding that we have to adjust to the difficult times, and we have done that during this time of COVID. As much as the past year was dedicated to managing COVID, we were also able to plan for the future by implementing our newly created strategic plan. Now, creating this plan was imperative to helping us unify our efforts and lay the groundwork for plotting our district's direction by setting priorities, and focusing precious resources to ensure that all stakeholders are working toward the same goals. It is our roadmap for data-driven continuous our main goals of the strategic plan pinpoint our five main focus areas. Academics and programs, personnel and leadership, learning environment and culture, communications and communication, and of course operations. Each area pinpoints its mission as well as its priority objectives. Additionally, the plan puts our mission, vision, and release statement in black and white so that our purpose is clear to both ourselves 
and all of our stakeholders. The best part is it is a five-year plan, which to me is long enough to allow for the details of this plan to become reality, but also not so long that we get into a run. As we've all learned from these last couple of years, flexibility is key to promote growth and change. So I want to talk to you about incredible teaching and learning. This is where it's at. This is why we're here, to provide unparalleled academic experiences for all our students. At the Waterford School District, we are doing just that through a variety of methods. We are smack dab in the middle of a $2 million investment for our curriculum. Everything from new English language arts curriculum for K through 12, a new, new math program for K-5, some other examples include Destination Imagination, where our elementary students team up to work and solve problems through inventive and engaging competition. Our middle schoolers can take accelerated PLA and math to garner our high school credit. And at high school, we boast many clubs, such as DECA, which prepares students as emerging leaders and entrepreneurs in marketing, finance, hospitality, and management. Now, in the fall, we will also be doing something new, one-to-one -one technology. A device for every student, where all students will be provided a Chromebook or a light device through a special grant we receive, in addition to the bond numbers. Now, we started implementing problem-based learning into our K-8 program this year. For those of you who don't know what problem-based learning is, it's a teaching method in which students learn by actively engaging in real-world and personally meaningful projects. Students work on a project over an extended period of time, from a week up to a semester. It engages them in solving a real-world problem or answering a complex question. Now, as a result, students develop deep content knowledge as well as critical thinking, collaboration, creativity, and communication skills. The collaboration, questioning, and wonder has already begun as each K-8 building uh, lead was able to start their learning with their students as the year began. Students at Grayson Elementary were able to develop and design their new playground by utilizing their mathematics, English language arts, and social emotional learning skills. Students at Donaldson Hills were able to build their own classroom design and learn how the setup of a classroom really plays into their learning style. At Pearson Middle School, a virtual art program. Students work through the project by researching different cultures and what masks personally represent. We also have invested a lot in our wired and our STEM academy because just like PBL, we understand the importance of providing students opportunities for hands-on learning. At our STEM academy, students train to learn and work within a team-based structure, working to find solutions to programs while also integrating traditional science and math curriculum. Now, WIRED, which stands for Waterford Initiative for Robotics, Education, and Development, is a competitive robotics program for students in first through eighth grade, representing all of our lower and middle buildings. Students are afforded the amazing opportunity to travel all over the state engaging in STEM competitions. Our teams are highly successful and have had a very uh, wins this past year. They recently competed in Charlotte, Michigan, and uh, in the tournament, uh, they garnered first place and uh, earning a spot at the state championships this month. Now, last summer, our Sweet Reef Band continued our innovative summer road reading initiative by going into local neighborhoods to provide 3,000 students with books and, of course, free ice cream. Now, we have amazing athletics here in the Walker School District. Of course, the big news from this department was last fall when our Waterford Mont football team won its first district championship in Waterford in the history of two playoff games. However, we have many, many athletic programs that are very competitive as well. Waterford generated senior Chloe Wall finished 15th in the entire state for cross country. Our Mason 8th grade boys basketball went undefeated, resulting in a conference championship, and Kettering student TJ Thomas took fifth place in the state in long jump. I want to pause in this section with talking about um, our music program to say that we are very dedicated to providing theater, music, and fine art programs for our students. And my cabinet, as well as the Board of Education, fully support all of the theater, music, and art programs in the district. 
We understand that these classes contribute to the enrichment and development of the entire student, the whole student. This past year was evidence of the high capital caliber of programming we have. In this room, as our students earn numerous accolades in our theater, music, and our programs. Now, a couple of quick examples include the Music Department of Kettering has been nominated for the Support Music Merit Award from the National Association of Music Merchants Foundation. This award is granted to individual schools as a way to acknowledge its commitment to music education and is awarded as the best part of the best communities for music education program. Kettering has received this award annually since 2017. Bella Ziegler, a Waterford Mott student, won the prestigious Thespian Scholarship at the 2021 Michigan Educational Theater Association State Theater Festival. This award is given to the top 10 Michigan high school theater students. Several of our fine art students recently earned recognition from the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards, including Kevin Senior Chloe Ball's photograph, which won the prestigious Gold Key Award and will go on to compete nationally. Yes, that is the same student who also took 15 in the state of cross country. Amazing students here in the Waterford schools. Now, regarding social and emotional engagement, that's been very important to during, during this COVID time. To that end, this year we expanded our student and family engagement department. SAVE is so important because they stand in the gap of student behavior in the classroom. They specialize in helping students with social and emotional issues that impact classroom achievement as a whole. We hold dynamic interventions and creative strategies through a variety of methods, such as monthly family meetings or by offering parenting strategies. They also are responsible for putting together many successful enrichment activities to build self-esteem, such as our recent district-wide spelling meeting and the fourth and fifth grade basketball program. I am so proud to be superintendent of Waterford School District for many reasons. Well, but one of them really is the amazing students we have here. Our kids are engaging and really care for their community. We've had so many wonderful events going on by our students this past year, all with the goal of helping the community. For example, at School Craft, the National Honor Society held a toy drive collecting 150 toys that were given to the Blood Cancer Society who gives them to children affected by cancer. At Riverside Elementary, student council made 220 care packages for the homebound seniors at the Waterford Senior Center. Care packages consist of cars, go-go, calendars, candy, and Rice Krispie treats. They also held a kindness can drive where they filled 40 boxes of canned goods and donated them to the Waterford community. Girl Scouts and School Craft put affirmations on kids' lockers showing support of positive self-talk and mental health. And check this out, Houghton Elementary has a care club. To be in the care club, fourth and fifth grade students must first fill out a job application expressing their desire and commitment to join. Now once selected, they give up one recess each week, that's a big deal, one recess each week to make police uh, uh, time like it's in the school colors blue and white. They then wait to hear of someone in need of care, a friend, a family member, or a student, a community member, or a friend of a friend. If they hear of a person in need, they know they can respond with action by giving a person a tangible expression of their empathy for them in their time of need. This year so far, the Care Club has given away over 20 blankets to people in need of love and support. I love this club because it has given our students an opportunity to act actively express their empathy and is teaching them how to care for one another. It is building character in our students and the quality of community that all of us want to enjoy. Like I said earlier, this is our future and the future is bright. Now COVID hasn't been easy on any one of us, but for our teachers and our support personnel, it has been exceptionally difficult. Days have been uh, challenged by keeping up with COVID protocols and dealing with the ramifications of what happens when students must pivot from online learning to in person and back to it. We appreciate our teachers and staff so much and realize the sacrifices that are made day in and day out to ensure that our students are given the best academic and social opportunities available. That is why. The Human Resources Department is approaching our employees with a positive customer service attitude 
to ensure our employees feel valued through a variety of methods such as increasing wages, improving fringe benefits, and honoring years of service. Now, at the Waterford School District, we are always readying ourselves for what the future holds. Part of that is to ensure that our facilities stay up to date so our students can learn in a safe environment or an innovative environment. Now, for our 2020 monitor, we are completing a variety of projects such as updating HVAC system to both our high schools. While we also are on the subject of high school facilities, I'd like to talk about our security. When I came to Waterford School District just over uh, two and a half years ago, I was impressed with the security systems and processes that I saw in place compared to other districts. That being said, in light of the recent tragic events in Oxford, we are currently reviewing the security measures we have in place. We're always looking, monitoring, and adjusting. Safety is always our number one priority. <clears throat> we are also conducting a bond refinancing. Saving the taxpayers $400,000 just this year. We do this annually to ensure our taxpayers and students are getting the most out of all of our bond money. Now, I think last year I mentioned on the video that the use of our 2020 bond funds, we have a new Stefanski Early Childhood Center on the West. This year we have finally begun the construction and we will have a groundbreaking ceremony on April 29th. It is so exciting to see the work begin on this project. We have talked about this project for a while, so to see it take shape has been a real joy for all of us. Now just a few facts about the center. This is the crown jewel of our district in this bond program with an investment of $30 million. The building will be 67,000 square feet with an additional 88,000 square feet dedicated solely to an outdoor play area. We will have the potential of fitting in over 600 students in this building, and hopefully all of these students will be future Waterford School District actors. As I have said many times with you and many places I go to speak, early childhood is indeed the foundation for academic excellence. Did you know that 90% of a child's brain develops by age five? Research has shown that a child's experiences during these early years directly affect how the brain develops, and in particular, how those experiences have a long-term impact on the child's health and ability to learn and succeed in school. We are so proud and so thankful for all of you and in our entire Waterford community in supporting these programs through the bond Now, I want to talk just a little bit more about our community. Waterford School District needs all the community support. We're so lucky that we have a wonderful community here in Longford. We have amazing connections with so many organizations that help fill in the gaps wherever needed. Our partnerships with the Waterford Chamber of Commerce, the Waterford Foundation, the Waterford Township uh, uh, offices, Rotary, Optimus, Goodfellows, and many more are truly appreciated. As I mentioned earlier, we are breaking through challenges this year. For that, we launched several campaigns to blast through the negativity and the challenges that we've seen in the last two years. We have started a new bi-monthly external newsletter called WSD Connect for any member of the community who wants to be in the know on important information going on in our district. We began a video series called District Spotlight that airs on Channel 22 on social media and every month highlights an important initiative or program taking place in Water School District. And last, our latest edition, our WSD Voice podcast, right now is uh, happening bi-monthly, featuring important news and initiatives in our district. We have already syndicated the podcast on two local radio stations, and we believe much more is to come with this amazing project. So stay connected. I want to share with you uh, something to take home. This is a magnet that you'll find. Everyone has one at their uh, at their seat, so uh, feel free to take those home. Stay connected in a lot of different ways. Newsletters, uh, our Twitter accounts, uh, listening to the WSD Voice podcast on our website, and of course, Comcast Channel 22 Magnet. So feel free to please take those. We want to stay connected. We want to share the good news so you can share it and be confident in the good work going on in our school buildings. So as I've been saying during the entire presentation, the future is bright. And as a testament to that, I'm going to end my presentation today with a video that highlights two of our high school seniors, Solomon Swain and Carmela Cortez, 
are just two of the amazing students we have here at Waterbury, and a wonderful testament to the bright future we have here at Waterbury Schools. I am Solomon Swain. I go to Waterford, Vermont. I am in the 12th grade. My name is Carmela Cortez. I am a senior this year, and I go to Waterford Academy High School. I don't know. You find a wide variety of different types of people there that come to the school, and that's the special thing about the school. You're not always Gonna, you're not going to find a lot of the same kinds of people. And because of that, you can, uh, teachers, uh, officials, and students, you're going to find a lot of different type of people, and that's where the opportunity comes in. That's where you can uh, create something that no one's done before. It builds a sense of community, once again, definitely. It's just everybody's very welcoming, I guess, you know, like I said, no matter where you come from, you can find someone that's similar or someone that can relate, um, which I, I, the previous districts that I've been a part of, I haven't, I haven't found this that is, um, that's as strong or as, uh, as highlighted, like, maybe as much of a priority, which I saw my definition just as a community, culture, diversity. I'm planning to go to Maryland and go to Bowie State University and pursue a career in either directing, filmmaking, and art. I actually participated in a scholarship competition for Central Michigan, and I was awarded the Centralis Gold, which um, it awarded me full tuition paid for, um, along with $5,000 towards like a study abroad semester. So that was very exciting. I'm um, very lucky and fortunate to have that. My mother and my grandmother actually immigrated from Columbia. And just growing up, ever since I was born and stuff, it's just always been stressed. You know, education is very important. You're very fortunate to be able to go to you know public education system or be a part of a public education system. And you know, some people in other countries have to fight for that opportunity. And a lot of women, you know, especially, aren't allowed to. And just that was always a force since a very young age. And um, even just beyond that, I always just love learning. The thing about being successful is that you have to keep moving. You have to keep going. Even though I'm not the greatest sprinter or long jumper, it's still good to keep going and chasing that success. Because as soon, the moment you stop moving, something's gonna get in the way of you. How about those students that had to just go one Wonderful testimony to what we are all doing and supporting in this community. You gotta keep going. COVID's been tough, it's been tough on our kids, our staff, it's been tough on all of us. But we kept going and we invested in the future and we've done that with your support. So with that, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to share the good news with you this morning and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Scott. Um, I can honestly say that I am super proud to be a graduate of Watermont High School. So um, this is this is great stuff. Um, all right. So I know I have you guys a little late, but sorry, I hope we give the new girls some grace. So um, lastly, we have our Waterford Township Supervisor, Gary Wall. Gary takes great pride when bragging that he's a lifelong Henry Waterford resident and 1972 graduate of Waterford Kettering High School. He wants me to say go captains. <laughs> Team Waterford. They continue every day to ensure our residents and business owners a bright and prosperous future. Gary is a longtime donor, sponsor, supporter, and volunteer for a variety of community organizations, including Waterford Coalition for Youth, Waterford Historical Society, Waterford Foundation for Cool Education, Blessings in a Backpack, and the Waterford Goodfellows. 
in his spare time. Gary enjoys the outdoors where he spends time fishing and hunting with his grandsons and planting and caring for his vegetable and flower gardens. Gary and his wife Donna have been married for 47 years. Their two adult children, Dennis and Shelly, have given them the true loves of their lives, grandson Zach Robinson and Gary and Sam Wall. Speaking for Gary today is his senior executive assistant, Shelly Sloss. Welcome to the podium. This morning with a few symptoms that may be related to COVID, so with a little of caution, he called me at 6 a.m. and asked me to step in today. Um, this is not what I normally do in the background, but I will do my best. I cannot promise any of his good jokes. I know a lot of people look forward to those every year. I'll try to slide one in, but uh, we'll get you guys through this pretty quickly. Thank you for sticking around. Please tune in later. You have to take off to the broadcast of the Hatch Channel. Uh, um, 20, municipal, channel, municipal Channel 20. So um, I'm very inspired after hearing everything this morning. It's been awesome to uh, listen to everything that's going on in Waterford. Very proud to be part of the community. Um, so this morning I'd like to welcome, I will introduce all of them together in one group. Obviously Gary Wells is not here with us today, but Kirk, uh, Kirk Kim Marquis, our treasurer Steve Thomas, trustees Anthony Bartolotta, Marie Hosworth, Janet Matsura, and Mark Monahan. Team Waterford from the 51st District Court are Judge Kuhn and Judge Fox. Um, Judge Fox had to step out, but Judge Kuhn is here this morning still. <laughs> and we're happy to have with us members of the Waterford Police Department, the Waterford Regional Fire Department, and various staff in the Waterford uh, Team Waterford from the DPW and various departments as well. So thank you all for coming this morning too. but we'd like to at least recognize that we are in year three of the pandemic and we've all done, you know, um, our pivoting and everything we've had to do to try to make it through these last few years. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of great things going on, as you've heard already in the township, and we're going to continue to move forward, uh, you know, accepting changes and, and doing everything we can to uh, have some great community events. So I'd like to highlight some of the things that happened in 2021 with our community events and the things that our departments have been accomplishing. Um, as Mr. Provenzano mentioned, we did have the DIA Inside Out on the Civic Center campus. There were seven reproductions of paintings, and we added QR codes to all of our signs so that you could have an interactive, um, you know, learn about the paintings as you're walking around campus. Our library engaged with the scavenger hunt. It was a very, very exciting opportunity for us uh, to have that in the township. We also added, um, additionally, some more art in the township. A uh, former clerk, um, Sue Camilleri, came up with this great flying fish idea. So you could purchase a plain fish, it was plywood, and you can see all these fish on the screen became something extraordinary. Um, you would purchase the fish for $25, um, paint it, and then they hang from the trees along our riverwalk. Um, money that was gained from that will go toward um, furthering the completion of the riverwalk, which if you're not familiar with it, is near Crescent Lake in 59. You can cross over from the Kroger Plaza to over where Planet Fitness is under the bridge, and it will eventually connect over to Crescent Lake Road where the uh, Greg Home booth is right now. We're seeing all those piles of dirt. That's going to be the connection that gets you over there. So it's a nice place for walkability right near the center of Waterford Township, which also happens to be the center of Oakland County. Um, so after that, we also were able to um, participate in something that was organized by Waterford residents. It's a great event. It was a first responders party. About 50 cars came through, and they were just saying thank you to our first responders. They brought them some gift cards, they brought them some snacks, and you can see there were some Cub Scouts there, and it's always a great event. It was the second year that they did that, and I know the first responders really appreciate the community letting them know, um, you know how much they are appreciated. We also had our sixth annual birthday township cleanup. This one happened to be our most successful of all six years. We had people coming out, all ages, families, from civic groups. It was wonderful. 125 volunteers came out and collected more than 50 yards of trash in one day from the roadsides of Waterford Township. It was incredible. Um, GFL donated dumpsters for us, and we're really looking forward to a great event this year as well. It will be on Saturday, the 23rd of April, and please visit the Waterford Township website to sign up. 
um, and get their students to earn hours and bring their family out and find a safe location for them. It was just absolutely a wonderful picture. Um, so there's some pictures of the event. You can see the big piles of trash and a lot of students there. So it was great. Um, and then also, speaking of the Riverwalk, they have some cleanup. They have the Riverwalk cleanup this year. And that um, area gets a little bit overgrown because there's a lot of greenery around it. So the volunteers come out, they're getting a young group there. They came up and helped us out. They clear brush. Um, it's, it's awesome that they do that every year. And we invite you to join us this year for that as well. And then Claire Marquis, speaking of more beautification, each year she holds a beautification contest. We accept um, nominations from the community for homeowners and businesses who really take the extra step above and beyond to make their businesses and their homes look beautiful. So that it's landscape, it's, it's different things. So we had um, 10 winners. They were all recognized at a township board meeting. They received a sign in their yards and they were given a certificate and a plant by Kurt Marquis um, that will also be, I believe, um, again this year. So check out the first website so you can make nominations for your neighbors. It's always appreciated. When people go, you know, the extra mile to really make Waterford look beautiful, so. Um, and so this year, we had a holiday club event. Normally that's going to be our tree lighting and our visit from Santa Claus. Um, however, it was a very high wind day this year. So they moved it inside, and it still ended up being a wonderful event. Santa was not grounded by the high winds, uh, so he was able to visit. There was crafts, cookie decorating, and it was wonderful. So we look forward to hopefully having the tree event or the tree lighting return this year. So moving on past our events to our departments and some of the things that they achieved this year, we'll start with the Waterford Regional Fire Department in 2021. They celebrated 80 years of serving the community. I think that's pretty wonderful. Um, and they also received some, some vehicles this year. Uh, they had a, a new fire engine that is at Station 2, a new command vehicle, which is at the bottom left there. That's at Station 1, I think. And then um, a rescue remount was delivered to Station 3. All of those were funded by SAD that the Waterford Township Civil passed a few years ago, and they are replacing their vehicles on a schedule so that we're able to continue to keep the vehicles up and running throughout the years without having to replace them all at one time. It's a good plan, and this year we were able to see quite a few um, vehicles added to the fleet. So. Uh, they also continue their community partnerships. They do a lot for the community, other than saving lives. <laughs> So um, this year they did the collaboration with Waterford Coalition for Youth and the Waterford Police Department. They were able to distribute 500 meals in an annual Thanksgiving activity. They participated in the Battle of the Badges, which was a shoot drive um, in support of Waterford Youth Assistance. They battled the uh, Police Department. And Matt, did you guys win this year? Okay, Fire did um, win this year, so they will do that again next year. And we encourage you to uh, vote for your favorite first responders by donating your shoes. And then they also participated in Autism Awareness Fundraiser where they stole t-shirts. And the proceeds from those uh, supported autism programs in the Waterford and Pontiac School Districts. So that's part of their charitable <coughs> The Waterford Police Department. They saw some very significant changes this year um, and some challenges with their personnel. They were uh, they hired 13 new police officers in 2021 and one dispatcher. They saw two promotions, two sergeant, and the recruitment efforts continued to be very successful. They were able to recruit more qualified candidates and they had 21 applicants that um, went for those 13 positions. So the recruitment efforts continue to be very good and people want to come work for the Waterford Police Department. Um, we are, our officers are receiving awards in 2021. They had three commendations and 15 unit commendations and one that was wonderful. The Waterford Police Department, I'm not going to read all of these to you guys. You can see them on the screen, but you can see they're taking a lot of calls Dispatch of EMS, uh, police patrol, they're taking a ton of calls there. Um, Waterford remains number 10 on the list of safest communities in Michigan, over 50,000 in population, and we remain in the 25th percentile in the United States for safe communities. One of the most exciting things from my point of view this year is that Waterford was able to develop a regional emergency operations center. They're taking their old dispatch center, which used to live in the basement of the uh, police department, 
and it, it served its time pretty well, but they moved it upstairs where there's light and windows, and it also brings them closer to where all of the administrative staff is. So, Lundgren has become a regional, the regional fire department, and working with the Oakland County and neighboring communities, they've become really a regional facility as far as this goes. So, this allows them to have, you know, access to the administrative staff and the dispatch center all in one area and really do their best to have efficient operations. Um, this was completed with some grant funding that Haley Stevens office was able to help us with and also with restricted use funds um, for that project. Here's a couple pictures. That video wall is like, it's a little hard to see in this picture, but it is tremendous. So I go through all those videos, they can make the screens, like six of them in one screen, they can fit the cameras throughout the township. It's just, it's a wonderful thing for them to have out there. And it spans the whole world. So if you've ever had an opportunity to kind of peek at it, you'll, you'll see it's really wonderful. And that's something they were able to install this year. Our 51st District Court has continued to move forward. They were able to uh, effectively work virtual and in person this year, adapting their uh, operations to that. They had um, they graduated their 1,500th graduate from their treatment court programs, which is wonderful. And two of their staff members celebrated 30 years of service, Shelly Lee and Denise Lowe. So that was a great year for, and this is the treatment court program um, photos over there. The Department of Public Works, they faced um, significant sh staffing shortage shortages throughout 2021, um, but they maintained their high levels of service and, and kept us all with working sewer and water, and we appreciate that, of course. Um, so they took on multiple large projects, the, most, the largest of which was the Kego Harbor Emergency Interconnect, and these photos kind of show how it starts from the underground work, which once it becomes this building on their side, we'll see what they've done. But that will help us connect to Kimo Harbor and it provides both communities with the opportunity for emergency water access in case of um, you know an event. Um, so they also did some, some pretty prominent upgrades that you'll be able to see when you come by the Civic Center campus. The sidewalks that they added there on the left will connect Hatchery Road all the way through the Civic Center campus and that improves walkability for our students at Hatchery and Pierce. It also goes right next to our soccer fields. So with all the traffic in that area, the sidewalks have been a wonderful improvement. And if you ever drive by there after school, you'll see a lot of the students are coming over to the library. So we're very happy to partner and uh, add those in. And then the next two pictures there are what the street next to the sidewalks used to look like. Um, they were from the lane. There's a lot of traffic that goes through there with the schools and then access to our Civic Center. So the after picture is what they did there. They also took those millings from that project and they were able to add those to our cemeteries to improve the pathways. So it was a nice way to take some of that um, material and really upgrade some of the cemeteries here in the township. And then on to the library. They were able to do some improvements inside and outside this year. They added carpet in the adult and teens area. They created a new space for tweens, so the kids that are in upper elementary have their own spot in the house. So they're, they're happy to have a little space that's called their own. And they did some outside improvements as well. You'll see that they added fall family story times this year, right under the, um, the lawn there, and they, it was wonderful. They were very well attended and people really enjoy being able to get back to their beloved story times without having an inside um, you know, opportunity with COVID. Their homebound delivery van, which is up there on the top right, is um, got a new wrap this year. And it not only is it beautiful, but it also helps promote the program. So if you're not aware, the Waterford Township Library will deliver um, you know, materials to people who are homebound. So reach out to them and they will they will gladly be sure that you can engage in your library um, even if you can't make it out. So, um, Waterford Parks and Recreation celebrated 70 years of serving the community this year. That's another wonderful milestone. Um, they were able to reopen the Recreation Center for daily program in January after being closed for nine months due to the pandemic. They also have leagues and day camps and programs for youth and adults totaling over 4,500 enrollments for the year. They were able to reinstate Flash's Friendship Club, which is um, a club for people with special needs. They were able to resume lifelong recreation programs uh, with their monthly lunches and all of their uh, daily activities. 
and then they brought to them fed some of our larger community events, such as Harvest Happening, Big Wheels, and Fun to Work. Another significant gain that they were able to achieve this year is that they received a $95,000 grant from the William G. and Myrtle Hess Charitable Fund to add animal fencing over at our Crown Jewel uh, Hess Pathway Park there on the Wednesday Road. So we're just keeping moving forward into 2022. Our clerk's office will hold four elections this year. Some of you may be aware that we have two special elections coming up, March 1st and May 3rd. This will um, replace our state representative in District 43, who was Andrea Schroeder, and as you're probably aware, she did pass last year um, due to cancer. And then in August 2nd and August 3rd, November 8th, we will have our state primary and general elections. So with that being said, make sure you get registered to vote. If you need to contact the clerk's office, they are there to help you. And with that also said, we have four elections this year, so they are hiring election workers and they would appreciate if you have time uh, to serve the community, you will be compensated. Um, so check that out, go to our website or call the clerk's office, and uh, if you be able to step up to uh, help out, they would love that. Um, we also have a program called VOTA, and that just continues to grow every year. It stands for the Western Oakland Transportation Authority. It provides door to door transit service for seniors and disabled adults 18 and over. Um, so the program was began in 2020 and it helped us expand to a larger area and more hours to serve the community. In 2021 alone, VOTA provided 10,000 rides to a lot residents and it's expected to continue to grow every single year. It, it's affordable and it's something that if you have you know, someone in the community who needs rides, definitely have them check that out. Um, another opportunity that Waterbird has um, Vacation is the Medical Marijuana Facility Licensing Program. In 2021, they held several very long meetings in which they reviewed 25 applications for medical marijuana facilities licenses. By June of 2021, they had approved five licenses, two for growers, one for processors, and two for provisioning centers. The board also recently voted to approve up to four additional provisioning centers. They will have a meeting next Friday to look at those new license applications and consider those for additional licensing. And the addition of medical marijuana facilities in Waterford Township is expected to bring both desired service and economic development to the community. One of the um, aspects that the board ensured when they put these licenses in place is to ask for community engagement. So these applicants are required to um, be involved in charitable um, endeavors and to be involved in the community. So that we're really looking forward to seeing what they can do to also, you know, help me buffer and even better place than their days. Um, we got to financial news. Waterford Township Board of Trustees and our budget staff are pleased to present another balanced budget for fiscal year 2022. Our rainy day fund for the fund balance remains above recommended minimums, which is excellent. And the, but what this allows is the use of cash versus debt financing, and that ultimately equals savings for the debt. Um, the, water, uh, the Board of Trustees continues to address one of our largest financial hurdles, and that is unfunded liability. They are in their fourth year of a corrective action plan, and that continues to go forward. The Board makes difficult decisions on an annual basis to try and address that, uh, that unfunding. And our accounting department received its 15th consecutive certificate of achievement for excellence in financial reporting. So the staff there, who is a uh, you know, fairly small group, continues to do excellent in that area. They've gotten the 15th award this year. Um, something else a lot of you may have heard about is the um, American Rescue Plan Act. Waterford Township will be receiving $9.28 million in funding for the American Rescue Plan. The funds must be committed by the end of 24 and used by the end of 26. So our board has recently been meeting on that subject, doing some brainstorming, and the township has engaged Guide House, which is a, a, a consulting firm that will help formulate the plan um, based on the feedback from the board and um, and then plan around. And they will help us do the reporting and make sure that we're sticking to the correct guidelines. So that's it's an exciting opportunity to take, you know, almost $10 million, well, a little over $9 million in funding 
um, to help some of the projects here in the township and really benefit the community. So stay tuned for that information too. Um, speaking of improvements, this is an exciting one. Walton Boulevard, we saw a leg of that get um, redone this year, reconstructed completely. And even though it was quite a long project, it looks wonderful. And I know that a lot of people, we got great feedback on the community. We also were able to participate in some preservation overlays, which is basic milling and capping of Airport Road, on Anglick Road, Sashaba, Williams Lake, and North Open Boulevard. I heard a lot of cheers on that one, the North Open Boulevard. Um, Waterford Township continues to commit to infrastructure. The board has designated $100,000 in 2022 to contribute to road improvements through a special assessment district project in the neighborhood roads. That means that if your neighborhood comes forward and would like to do a special assessment, um, you can appeal to Waterford Township Board of Trustees through an application project to ask for some funds to be committed to that. So that will take some of the, some of the burden off of the, um, the taxpayers on those roads. Um, so they put $100,000 toward that this year. And um, also you'll see this year that the next section of Walton Boulevard from Sashawa to Clintonville Road is on the schedule to be reconstructed for 2022. It got moved up from 2023. And then you'll see some improvements on the um, the next leg of Airport Road, Pontiac Lake Road, and over on Man Road. We're sharing a project with um, the Road Commission and Independence Township. Again, if you need to infrastructure, the board has appropriated $75,000 in 2021 and $100,000 in 2022 to repair and replace place pedestrian pathways throughout the township. A lot of those um, have been crumbling over the years, and each year for the last several years, the board has committed a significant amount of money toward those upgrades. Um, 2022 marks the third year of converting neighborhood streetlights to LEDs. Um, that is a good project. And uh, the return on investment is a little over one year. Uh, street lighting continues to help make your community a little safer and um, a little more attractive. And development is continuing here on Waterford Township. So uh, we are a primarily developed community and we are in the redevelopment phase. That means we don't have a lot of vacant land to be developed and we have a lot of older buildings that really need to, to see some revitalization. But our new and existing property owners are investing in models and upgrades. You can see there's been a lot of permits that were pulled in 2021. The department has been very busy. And 13 demolition permits were pulled last year, which means we were able to get 13 blighted structures down and ready for redevelopment. Um, they also did some great things this last year, and it's not very, um, you know, you can't really dress it up much, but they. They um, made some changes to the zoning ordinance and code ordinance, and what that does is allows us to further streamline business development and really focus on some um, economic prosperity in the uh, commercial sector. They also utilized $300,000 in CARES Act funding to assist 25 small businesses and 10 residents. They granted $167,000 in no interest of repayment loans to help 14 homeowners with urgent home repairs. And we uh, had 523 residents dispose of nearly 70,000 pounds of hazardous waste through the NOHAS program. And they also acquired a $30,000 grant from the Michigan Economic Development Corporation to help in developing our new master plan. Now, that is some of the most exciting news for the day. Waterford Township is going into a master plan um, phase this year. So in the first quarter, they will begin the process of updating that master plan. Uh, master plans are a comprehensive guide for the vision for the future of Waterford. It's a 20-year plan, I believe. Yeah, 20 years, I think. And um, it will focus on topics such as economic development, housing, education, redevelopment, environmental protection, planning, zoning, and land use, and capital improvement. In order to develop a successful master plan, community engagement is essential. So we need all the people in this room or engaged in the community to join us and we welcome you and it will be a great um, a great time for you to have some input on the master plan. All right, so on behalf of Waterford Township and Gary Wall, thank you guys for bearing with me today. I appreciate it. I'm happy to have shared this news with you. Um, I think you saw from all the presentations today, it's a wonderful time to be in Waterford Township. We've got a lot of exciting things going on. Um, everyone we invites you to engage with us, check us out on social media, the websites, come to our meetings, give us a phone call. 
Um, it is our honor and pleasure to serve the Waterford Township community, and we look forward to a very prosperous year ahead. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Shelly. Thank you, everyone, for bearing with us. It's, uh, it's definitely a lot different being on this side of the podium. So um, thank you again, everybody, for attending. We hope this was beneficial for you all. Um, if you have any questions, we have our constituents still here. Um, and we hope you enjoyed your morning. I was so happy to see you all. And uh, I hope you all drive safely, and have a great week. Take care.